push against the boundaries of their world and redefine what's possible. A killer whale named Maga is one. She has learned to break free of the ocean's shackles. Overcoming instinct, she rushes toward shore and hurdles onto land. Maga's hunting technique is key not just for her own survival. She must also feed her family and then teach the young to take her place in the killing school. also known as killer whales, are the ocean's top predators. They hunt around the globe, giving chase wherever prey leads. But even orcas have their limits. Instinct warns them to avoid the shallows. When an orca strands, its skin can dry out quickly, and it will die. But out of the world's 50,000 killer whales, a few defy nature. When they spot prey close to shore, they throw themselves onto the beach to make a kill. Researchers have studied them for 30 years, giving them names. There's Maga, roughly 30 years old, and in her prime. Five other killer whales in her family. And the top hunter, Mel. These orcas are headed to one of the only places on Earth where their prey can't hide, even on land. This is Peninsula Valdez in Argentina's Chubut province. It's a rugged stretch of coast where the Earth's broken bones spill into the Atlantic. Waves hammer and claw at the shore, running head on into winds that cut across the open plains. Life is as rugged and beautiful as the land itself. Adapting to every niche, even the steepest cliffs, they must battle the elements and each other. Here, there is no mercy for the weak. Two hundred fifty miles of pebbly beach mark the boundary between ocean and desert. It's an ideal sea lion breeding colony and the perfect orca hunting grounds. At Peninsula Valdez, killer whales have learned to use the combination of deep water and steep beaches to their advantage. A rocky ledge runs along most of the coast. Mel and other large orcas would get trapped if they tried to cross it. But in some places, channels cut through this reef, connecting deep water to the beach. The orcas have figured out how to use these channels as attack routes. At high tide, Mel and Maga can swim right up to shore without running aground. The steep pitch of the beach also works to the orca's advantage. Young sea lions have a hard time scrambling out of the surf. 
and the same round pebbles that make a good sea lion nursery are also a perfect orca landing pad. They roll like ball bearings, easing the orcas back into the ocean. Mel can launch his great bulk out of the water, then waves and gravity help pull him back. Mastering this hunting technique takes years of practice and is so dangerous, less than half of these orcas attempt it. The others are too young or simply never acquired the skill. They wait offshore for the hunt to begin. Sea lions begin to haul out at Peninsula Valdez in December. Two days after arriving, a female gives birth. Her pup begins life blissfully ignorant of the dangers that await. In just eight weeks, she'll have to leave the beach. In that short time, she must learn key survival skills that will get her past the orcas. For Mel and Maga, the clock is ticking as well. This concentration of prey is a rare feeding opportunity that won't last long. The orcas will try to catch at least 200 before the pups wise up and scatter into the open ocean. Just six days after giving birth, the pup's mother is ready to breed again. And that's why the males are here. A dominant male stakes out a piece of the beach. He claims his females and battles all challengers. He may have up to 18 females in his harem, mating with each one. He won't leave the beach, not even to eat, for eight weeks straight. At first, the pup sticks close to her mother. In two months, she'll triple her weight to 100 pounds. They will spend most of the year together with the pup learning from her mother how to catch fish and avoid predators. The pup is facing a steep learning curve. Offshore, Maga, Mel, and the other orcas bide their time. In these early days, killer whales have the advantage. Unlike her mother, the juvenile doesn't associate the orca's fin with danger. She's also unaware of the orca's attack channels. And she's not a born swimmer either. She'll need to learn this crucial skill. Starting at three weeks old, the pups begin to practice. While our pup doesn't grasp what the fin represents, her mother does. She struggles to keep her daughter out of the water, where Mel watches and waits. Headstrong, the pup fights to get into the surf. But her mother is just as determined. Until her pup learns to fend for herself, 
She'll do whatever it takes to protect her. Not every pup is so lucky. There's nothing his mother can do but watch. The pup is safe as long as she stays where the reef runs right up to the beach and avoids the orca's attack channels. The unlucky ones provide a grim lesson. survivors grow more wary. While the sea lions are still young, Mel and Maga can catch up to 16 a day. Blood ties run deep with orcas, and most grow up in tightly knit pods centered on the females. Maga belongs to a separate band from Mel and Doña Blanca, and her group spans four generations. Polygamous, the females mate with several males, so the paternity of their children is unclear. Pregnant for 17 months, they give birth to monster-sized 400-pound babies. They nurse for up to two years and may stay with Maga and the other mothers for the rest of their lives. Letting out a series of whistles and grunts, they tell each other where they are and what they're doing. Each group has its own distinct set of calls, like dialects the young learn from their elders in an orca form of homeschooling. Cooperation, communication, and the ability to learn make them successful hunters. Given their prowess, a face-off between an orca and a sea lion might seem like an uneven fight. Killer whales are the largest members of the dolphin family, and adult males like Mel can weigh six tons and measure 21 feet. But behind those sad-looking eyes beats the heart of a formidable opponent. In open water, sea lions are a challenge for orcas to catch. Extremely agile, they change direction in the flick of a flipper. Recognizing an orca's fin, adults seek safety high on the beach. Mel has honed his skills over the years. 
making a kill on 60% of his attempts. But with each attack, the pups become that much wiser and harder to catch. When Mel charges up the beach, he's not making a blind rush. He's using all of his senses. Orcas have good eyesight, at least equal to a sea lion's, both in and out of the water. Like other dolphins, Mel and Maga can use echolocation to hunt. But sea lions may have learned to recognize the echolocation's distinctive clicks. So at Peninsula Valdez, orcas run silent. Instead, they rely on another powerful sense, their hearing. Detecting which direction a sound is coming from, Mel can pinpoint a sea lion's location without ever seeing it. However, the conditions have to be just right. If the surf is too heavy or the wind blows in from the sea, it overwhelms the sound made by the sea lions. Mel can't pick out the distinctive audio signature of a pup scraping across the pebbles. He has to wait for the seas to calm. Hunting the beach is just one strategy orcas use to catch prey. They feed on at least 100 different species. In the open ocean, they charge through the water at 30 miles per hour, chasing down even the swiftest prey. In confined spaces like the Norwegian fjords, orcas herd schools of herring into tight balls called carousels. They flash their white bellies to startle the fish and stun them with their tails. In the Antarctic, Seals often rest on ice floes. Orcas swimming in tandem create a wave large enough to wash off their prey. Hunting cooperatively, they even overpower animals as big as gray whales. Separating the calf from its mother, they take turns dunking it until it weakens and drowns. One of the few animals they've never attacked in the wild is a human, or at least no one has survived to report it. At Peninsula Valdez, when the weather turns too rough to hunt the beach, Mel and Maga can wait for the sea lions to come to them. The pup's mother needs to eat. She's nursed her youngster for two consecutive days and now has to leave for the fishing grounds. She may be gone for four days. To reach open water, she braves a gauntlet of killer whales. Maga's group blocks the exit routes. Starving, she has to find a way through. She can race across the shallows, hoping that the orcas won't risk getting caught on the rocks, or make a quick dash for a nearby island. When the coast is clear, she takes off 
swimming as far as 200 miles to reach fishing grounds. Here, she gorges on 20 pounds of fish a day. Left to her own devices, the pup joins a group of youngsters. With them, she explores her world through play. In just four weeks, she too will have to get past the orcas to reach the fishing grounds. One of her younger playmates shuffles along the edge of the ocean and gives off a distinctive sound. This is what Mel has been waiting to hear. The pitter-patter of little flippers. The young pup has to practice swimming, but he's now learning to keep an eye out for orcas. As he enters the surf, he hesitates. Experience has taught him patience. He listens and anticipates where the pup will flee. It's not just brute force that makes Mel so successful. It's his knowledge of these beaches. Until the pups figure out where the attack channels are, they're still vulnerable. At Peninsula Valdez, sea lion pups are becoming more guarded, but they still don't grasp where they can and can't safely go. For the orcas, high tide is the killing time. Now six weeks old, our pup practices swimming in the shallows. She's safe as long as she stays where the reef protects her. The older pups are growing more savvy, so Mel has to time his approach just right. He waits for a pup to cross the attack channel. Approaching at roughly nine miles per hour, he builds up a head of steam, accelerates at the key moment, and slams on the brakes at the very last second. Hurtling onto land does not come naturally to an orca. Instinct tells him to stay clear of the beach. It's a learned strategy, passed from one animal to the next. Because Mel hunts the beach alone, everything he knows could die with him.
but Maga's group contains 13 members, and they hunt cooperatively, with the young learning from their elders. Maga often charges into a group of pups, pouncing on the closest. Confused, the rest scatter, and a young male named Augustine swoops down to grab one. Even if Maga misses, another killer whale from her group backs her up. The youngest members observe, getting a view into how to hunt the beach. Maga then carries a sea lion pup, still alive, back to the young orcas. They take turns chasing and catching it, learning how to handle live prey. This gives them important experience in making a kill, but they still need to learn how to hunt the beach. And even for Maga, the pups are getting harder to catch every day. At two months old, our pup has become a good swimmer. She's learning that the fin means danger. And she's beginning to grasp one other crucial lesson. With a group of other pups, she swims along shore until they reach the danger zone. Then, they deliberately get out of the water and walk. She's figuring out where the killer whales can and can't go. The days of easy hunting along the beach are over for Mel and Maga. It's been a good hunt. They've fed on over 200 pups. But it's time for the young sea lions to leave Peninsula Valdez. The pup sticks close to her mother, dashing across the shallows. They get past the orcas and make it to the fishing grounds. In four to five years, she'll come back to Peninsula Valdez to breed and have young of her own. The survival of the next generation will depend on how well that pup learns. Now, the beach is empty, and cold weather settles in over the southern hemisphere. Mel and Doña Blanca head offshore to fish and hunt. But Maga and her group will return in six months. When they do, they'll bring the young to a beach perfectly suited to teaching them how to strand. But this time, the prey will be far bigger and even more challenging. Off the coast of Peninsula Valdez, newborn right whales signal the beginning of spring. Born in these protected waters, they stick close to their mothers. In summer, they'll make a challenging journey to the Antarctic feeding grounds. 
But now, they face an even greater menace. To orcas, almost every animal, no matter how big, is prey. The right whales cluster together in the shallows. Here, the orcas can't easily drown the calves. One's fluke has already been shredded, most likely from an earlier attack. The right whales fight back, striking out with their powerful tails. Unable to separate the calf from its mother, the killer whales shift their focus to other prey. In spring, Peninsula Valdez transforms into one of the world's largest elephant seal breeding colonies. Fifty-five thousand descend onto the beaches. These behemoths make sea lions look like small fry. Bulls, the largest seals on Earth, grow to 16 feet and weigh four tons, almost as big as female killer whales. Clownish in appearance, they prove that looks can be deceiving. Their name comes from the bull's large trunk-like proboscis. He uses it to amplify a roar, warning other males. Their threats and counter threats can be heard over a mile away. Strongest males establish themselves as the beach masters. Despite their impressive bulk, they can race across the pebbly beach at close to 10 miles per hour, faster than most humans. When the females are ready to breed, a full blown bull melee hits the fan. They slash, slice, and body slam each other. Many suffer serious injuries, including deep cuts and broken bones. All bear battle scars. Females are six feet shorter and two tons smaller than males. They almost look like two different species. The female is facing four weeks that could break even the most seasoned parent. She'll give birth, breed, then nurse and wean her pup. One of the world's largest creatures starts life helpless and vulnerable. He's born on a stretch of beach that lines the mouth of a 20-mile lagoon. It provides shelter from high winds and waves for the elephant seals. For orcas, it holds the promise of a meal. Maga and her group pressing close, checking to see what the beach offers. Nothing catches her eye yet. 
the seals are too far up the beach. But there's still an opportunity here. Low winds, gentle waves, and steep pebbly slopes form a perfect classroom. Two killer whales in Maga's group, Antu and Ishtar, lead the youngsters toward the beach. Valentine, who's still learning to strand, may have the clearest memory of how dangerous this strategy is. As a juvenile, he came close to dying when he got caught high and dry on a reef. Freed by the rising tide, he rejoined his family. Today, he's alongside the other students. Antu demonstrates how it's done. She approaches this serious business as play. For the young, the greatest hurdle to overcome is instinct. A few are reluctant to go up onto the beach. Chana, one of the youngest pod members, tries to get back to the open ocean. Ishtar blocks a retreat, pushing and nudging her higher onto the beach. If Chana is ever to hunt the shoreline, she needs to become comfortable in the shallows. This is the first crucial step to getting the hang of their unique hunting skill. Lesson learned, Ishtar lets her go. Only a few killer whales will master this technique and become successful beach hunters. Their ability to provide this key food for the rest of the group hinges on what they learn here in the killing school. Tens of thousands of elephant seal pups are about to experience a major life change. One has had it easy so far, tripling his weight, exploding from 90 to 270 pounds. He's now so fat, he'd float like a cork if he had to swim. Like a sea lion, he's not a natural born swimmer. He'll have to learn this skill on his own. His mother is about to leave for good. She's had to fast for four weeks. Losing almost 19 pounds a day, she's dropped from 1,500 to less than 1,000. Faced with a demanding mate, a youngster that's sucking her dry, and nearing starvation, the female heads off to feed. Elephant seals travel and hunt alone. She and her pup may never see each other again. Most make a quick dash for open water. But she has to be careful. The orcas are constantly on the lookout for any opportunity. Left on his own, her pup will have to face the ocean's greatest predator by himself. Without their mothers, elephant seal pups band together and form creches. They wrestle and play fight, tiny versions of their mothers and fathers.
Over the next six weeks, their baby fat turns to insulating blubber and muscle. At low tide, a pup wades into a pool and practices swimming. But he's constantly being shadowed. Maga never sleeps. An orca's brain is divided into two hemispheres. To rest, Maga switches one hemisphere off while the other stays active. When the tide comes in, she'll be ready. As the lagoon's tidal basin fills, Maga's group moves into position. Pups idle close to the water's edge. Maga slowly creeps toward the distinctive sound of seal and surf. She thinks twice about tackling a full-grown bull. She passes on a juvenile male as well. At 270 pounds, a pup's no lightweight either. But Maga's stomach follows the path of least resistance. A few spare inches separate life from death. Maga circles, searching for another opening. She doesn't need much. A tail dipped into the surf is enough. Captured on film for the first time, an orca snatches a young elephant seal from Peninsula Valdez. Practicing on an empty beach is one thing. Now the young need to learn how to attack a real live animal. The juvenile hunters trail close behind Maga as she approaches the beach. Maga drags the 270 pound pup back into the surf to share with her group. Every day, she catches up to three pups. With each attack, the young killer whales grow more familiar with the skills they need to master. Before the elephant seals leave the beaches, Maga reinforces another key lesson. She releases an elephant seal pup. With sea lions, the young learned how to handle prey. Here, they learn how to work as a team. They take turns heading it off, grabbing it and letting it go. These are necessary skills for when they return to open water. In the last lesson of the season, the young hunt as a group. For these killer whales, cooperation is crucial for survival. In just days, the elephant seals will head out to sea, and the orcas will have to move on. But they've taken an important step, T-1. 
teaching the next generation skills that will help to feed the group. Next year, when they return, the roles will start to shift, and the students could begin to provide for their teachers. In time, they'll bring up a new generation, passing along everything they've learned in the killing school.